equation is and how to solve systems using basic elimination. You also are going to learn what standard form is. Like you have slope intercept form, that's a form of a linear equation. Standard form is another form. We're going to understand how that applies to basic elimination for systems of equations. And finally, you'll understand what inverse coefficients are. You probably have a good idea. You know what coefficients are, yes or no? Yes. You know what inverse is, right? Yes. So inverse just means opposite. So if you have a 3x, what's the inverse of that? Negative. 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 So if you know that, that is the key, that little piece of information, that little nugget is the key to the entire chapter. Because whenever you solve a system of equations, you always need inverse coefficients. If you start off the problem that way, great. If not, you'll have to make inverse coefficients. And there's a couple different ways we do that. That's pretty much the goal of the whole chapter, inverse coefficients, eliminating, and solving. So, specifically, a system of equations, <coughs> by the way, shh, looks like this. And you're like, wait, hold on, why are there two equations? Because it's a system. A system is a collection of equations that is solved simultaneously, which means at the same time. So we're actually gonna be solving both of these at the exact same time. Not one, but both. Now, since we have two equations, that means we should have how many answers? Two. Two answers. You're gonna have two answers. When you solve a system, such as this one above, you will be solving for both x and y. We will end up with two answers. One answer for x, one answer for y. There's only one combination of x and y in the entire universe that will solve this system, which means by solving, I mean when you substitute an x and y, you'll get two true statements. We'll get to that down here. Your answer will always be in the form of a coordinate pair. Later on in the chapter, when we solve systems of equations by graphing, you're gonna see where all of this goes. Every system of equation solution is a coordinate pair because it's actually the point where if we graphed both of these equations, where the two lines overlap each other. Now, that's later on in graphing, that's lesson three. We'll get there and you'll understand more about it. Right now, let's just focus on how we turn this mess into a coordinate pair. Now, you will get a coordinate pair when you solve it, you will. And then you can take that, just like we could with a normal solution, substitute it back in, and we should end up with, if it was a regular equation, we'd end up with a true statement if we substitute our answer back in. And the systems of equations, if you substitute whatever your answer is, in this case, this would be the answer to the system, if you substitute it back in here, you're gonna get two true statements. You should get a true statement for the top equation, a true statement for the bottom equation. But what does that mean? That means, and we will solve these in a couple minutes, that means that if we were to, if we were to solve this system using the methods that I'm gonna show you a little later on, we would get this coordinate pair. How do I check to see if this coordinate pair is actually the real solution? I substitute four and five back into both equations. What does four correspond to, an x value or a y value? X. x value. What does five correspond to? Y. y value. So we would take this coordinate pair, we would substitute it into both equations. So what I did is I took these equations here, they're down here now, and I replaces, I replace the x and y with a four and a five, and a four and a five, to see if I get two true statements. So I substitute in, I multiply and add. On the top equation, four times four is 16, three times five is 15. What's 16 plus 15? 31. 31. Does 31 equal 31? Yeah. Yes, that's your true statement. I check it on the bottom. I substitute in, I get negative 16 plus 40. If I combine those, I get 24 equals 24. So when I substitute my solution in, I get two true statements. You should never get any system of equation wrong because you can always go back and substitute in your answers to check your work just like a regular equation you can always take your solution you substitute it back in and see if you have the right answer but the real question is how do we turn this into this in order to understand that there's a couple of things you have to know before we can ever solve this the first thing is what standard form is so far you've been introduced to slope intercept form some other type of linear forms we're introducing a new form now known as standard form Standard form is always written the same way. I'll let you write that in, then I'll tell you exactly what standard form is. This is a standard form of an equation. I want you to notice that the x and y variables are on the left side of the equation, and c represents, what do you think c represents? Constant. A constant. So we have our x and y terms on the left. Yes, they must be in this order. x term, then the y term, equal sign, constant. A, B, and C all represent numerical values. 
x and y represent your variables. So this is standard form. I'll let you guys write that in, and I want you guys just to look up here, and I'm going to show you what happens when we don't have equations in standard form. So in order to solve a system by elimination, which is what we're doing today, all of our equations must be written in standard form. X term, Y term, equal sign, then the constant. X term, Y term, equal sign, constant. If we look at this first example here, I want you guys to look closely and tell me, is this equation right now, is it written in standard form? Yes or no? No. If an equation is not written in standard form, before you can solve it, you must go in and rewrite that equation in standard form so you can solve it. So if I look here, my x term's in the right spot, my constant's in the right spot, but my y term, is that on the right, is that on the right spot, yes or no? no? No, so I would have to move this to the other side. And I think by now we have a pretty good idea how to move things back and forth from <coughs> one side of the equation to the other. <coughs> Anybody want to take a shot at how you would move this? Um, Colton, how would you move it, what would you do? Inverse operation. Inverse operation. This is a positive y. What's the opposite of positive y? Negative. Negative y. So we subtract y from both sides of the equation. And you should end up within the correct form. Remember, x term comes first, then the y term, then the equal sign, and that cancels. You bring down the 3. Is this in standard form now? Yes. Yes, it is. x term, y term, equal sign, constant. Just repeat that to yourself. x term, y term, equal sign, constant. If you can't say that about whatever you rewrote, something is in the wrong spot. Once you have your equation, or sorry, equations, because we're doing systems, in standard form, you would then be able to solve them by elimination. So you always check for that first. I look at this next equation here. Is this in standard form right now? No, no it's not. So I have to rewrite this equation. My y term's in the right spot. My constant is in the right spot. What's in the wrong spot? The x term. So, Malik, how would I move that over to the other side? You subtract 2x. I subtract 2x. 2x from both sides. Make sure you write them in the correct order. X term, y term, equal sign, constant. I'm not subtracting 2x from anything. There was no x term over here, so I just bring this down. Negative 2x. Bring down, that's a positive y. Equals, that cancels, and a negative 4. That is now in standard form. You have no idea how important that form is to the rest of your algebraic life. Not only in here, but in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and everything beyond that. You'll walk into classrooms and teachers will expect you just to know what standard form is. And they'll say, can you put that in standard form before you solve it? Or they'll say, can you put it in slope-intercept form? But that starts to get phased out, and you really just deal with standard form, especially when you get into quadratics and higher level equations. Right now, though, all we need is standard form. We need to know we know how to make sure we put things in standard form. X term, Y term, equal sign, constant. Once both of your equations are in this form, you could then move on to the next step. Does anybody have any questions about, real quick, what a system is or what standard form is before we move forward? Anybody? It's a lot of information. I know it's the first lesson of a new module, so you get a whole lot of info. What's up, Anita? A system. A system. This is a system. Oh. You have two equations, both in standard form, in order for you to solve it, stacked on top of each other. That's a system. And our job is to solve it. Our answer will always be in the form of a coordinate pair. There's multiple ways to solve these systems. We can solve them like we're doing today with elimination. We can solve them by graphing them. We can also solve them by something called substitution, which is the last thing we them. Today we're just doing elimination. So we're basically solving these three different ways over the next four lessons. Okay, what's up? Um, basically, can the equation be flipped so the constant's on the other side? Um, you'd always side? want x term, y term on the left, equal sign constant. You don't want it flipped. Because then you have to remember to flip both of them. So that's why we don't ever do that. Standard form is always written. Variables on the left, equal sign, and a constant on the right. And since that's the universal approach to it, as you progress through math, always keep that. Because no one ever remembers to flip both of them. <coughs> it doesn't. So. Any other questions before I move on? Lots of vocab in the beginning. All right. Now that we know what a system is, system solutions is where the pair, what standard form is, we can solve a system. The easiest way to solve a system algebraically is by elimination. In order to solve these in elimination, we must eliminate one set of variable terms. So if we look at this system of equations, I have one set of x variable terms, 
I have one set of y variable terms. 4x and negative 4x, 3y, 8y. Those are my two different sets of variable terms. In order to solve this, I must eliminate one of them. I either get rid of the x's or I get rid of the y's. But before you can solve, you absolutely must get rid of one set of terms. In order for us to do that, we want to see if we have something known as inverse coefficients. Inverse coefficients simply means the same number, opposite sign. Must also be the same variable. Something like 3x and negative 3x. 4y and negative 4y. All of those are inverse coefficients. So here in our original equation that we solved earlier, first the one that we had the first one, we had an inverse here, 4x and negative 4x. Why do you guys think I want inverse coefficients so badly? What's so good about them? What happens to them? What happens? They eliminate each other. They eliminate each other. They cancel out. If you have a 4x and a negative 4x, they cancel, leaving me with just the y's. And once I can solve for y and I know what that is, it's really easy to go back and find out what x is. So these are inverse coefficients. Same number, opposite sign, very important here at the bottom. Must be the same variable. So we're going to play a little game now called inverse or no. Nah. Inverse or no, nah, bro. Pull me up. Inverse or no, nah, bro. No, nah. nah, bro. Not inverse, bro. 3y and 3y. It's the exact same variable. It's the same number, but we don't want the same number. We want inverse coefficient. Okay. Um, Ariana. Right here. Inverse or no, nah, bro. <laughs> Inverse, good job. Negative 1.3x, positive 1.3x, they would cancel each other out. Good job. Um, Simon, next one. Inverse or null, nah, bro? No. Nah. Null, nah, bro. The numbers are opposite, but the problem lies in the variables. That's a 4y and a negative 4x. Has to be the same variable. What's up? You want to do the last one? Yeah. All right, Catherine, inverse or null, bro? Inverse. inverse. What invisible numbers here? One. one. What invisible numbers here? One. one. So it's one and negative one, because that little negative sign makes it a negative one, one. So my coefficients are one and negative one. That makes that inverse, bro. Oh. All right, so you have to understand what inverse coefficients are. Once you do, then it makes solving these things very easy. Now we're actually going, we're going to solve a couple of these. So you have to learn all this stuff before you can solve it. It does take practice, it does, because you're doing something that is totally different from everything you've done before. No longer do we have one little simple equation with one variable. Now, not only do we have two equations, we have two different variables we're solving for. So it does take practice. The good thing is, I gave you very detailed notes and very detailed steps. We're gonna solve these together. First things first. Step one, I identify if I have inverse coefficients. Class, do I have inverse coefficients yes. here, yes or no? Yes. For what, the x's or the y's? Yes. The x's. So since I have inverse coefficients here, that makes my job easy. I'm going to eliminate these two. Those will cancel. Once those cancel, I'm gonna wait for you to do that, then I want everyone to look up here, because this is where I mean this is a step and everything falls apart. Once those are eliminated, you're just combining whatever you have left. So we draw a line here. This goes back to terms. You have a positive 3y. By now, we should all know how to combine terms. A positive 3y and a positive 4y becomes 7y. If you can combine terms, you can do this. A positive 12 and a positive 16 becomes 28. 28. And we have 7y equals 28. Once I can figure out what y is, it's very easy for me to go back and find x. So I've eliminated the x's. I've combined the y's and the constants. Now I can go in and I can solve this and figure out what y is. This is multiplication. What's the inverse of that? Division. So we divide both sides by 7. And I identify the first half of my answer. y equals 4. Now, at the very bottom here, we're going to skip down here for a second and we're going to go back. Remember, my answer is in the form of a what? A coordinate pair. So we write our parentheses. I know the y value. Is the y value the first or second value in a coordinate pair? Second. second. So comma, four. 
Now I have to go back and I have to find my x value. I'm going to wait for you guys to write that because I want you to pay attention to this and don't write it until the end. Just pay attention. Okay. Let's just go through this. I want to make sure we all understand what we're doing. So we understand that we eliminated the x's, right? You're with me? We found the inverses eliminated. We combine the y's, we combine the constants. Is everyone good there? We solve for y, we identify that y equals 4. Is everybody good there? Yes. Now that we know what y is, here's what you do. You have a choice. You are going to pick one of these original equations, and you're going to substitute the value of y back into it. Once you do that, we will be able to solve for x. So which one here looks easier, the top one or the bottom one? The top one, because there's no negatives. So here's what we do. We take the top equation, we're going to write it, and that's going to be 2x plus 3. Don't write the y because we're substituting in for y. But what replaces the y? 4. Four. What's happening here between the 3 and the y? Multiplication. So make sure you put that in parentheses and make sure that equals 12. So 2y plus 3 times 4 equals 12. You will perform the multiplication and you're going to have 2x plus 12 equals 12. I have to get the x term alone. So what do I do with this positive 12 here, class? Subtract. I subtract 12 from both sides. I get 2x equals 0. I still have to get rid of my coefficient, so I'm going to divide both sides by what? 2. two divide by 2. Divide by 2. I kind of read in space, but anything divided by 0 is 0. So that means my value of x is equal to 0. So my answer for this is 0, comma, 4. And if you want to check it, you can go back and substitute that coordinate pair into both equations, and you will get two true statements. I'll wait for you guys to write that, then I will prove it to you that this is the right solution. The first couple times you do it, it's a lot of work. After that, it goes very quick. As you start spotting the inverses, you eliminate, and it's just solving a one-step equation and a two-step equation. And everybody in here knows how to do that. So how can I prove to you that this answer is good? If I substitute this in, so this is my x value, right? What's 2 times 0? Zero? 0. Then what's 3 times 4? 12. 12 equals 12. That's true. I substitute it in again. What's negative 2 times 0? Zero? 0. 0. What's 4 times 4? 16. 16 equals 16. I have two true statements. That is a good solution. You should never get these wrong. You can always check your answer. You're taking these. You have to substitute them in, not to one, but to both. There are a lot of numbers that will give you one true statement. There's only one set of numbers that will give you two true statements. Let's try this one over here. Let's, what's up? Can you get the y just by dividing, for example, 12 by 3? No, because you still have to deal with the x. The only way to solve a system is to totally eliminate one set of variables first. That's why we eliminated these. The only way to get that y value is how do you know? If you don't get rid of the x, couldn't this be anything? Couldn't x be anything? How do you really know what y is? Could you ever be sure? No. That's why we have to eliminate one. The only way to be sure of what y is or what x is is to eliminate one of the variable, one of the sets of variable terms first. Once you do that, it becomes pretty easy. What's up? Um, what happens there? There is like no inverse. Uh, we're gonna get to that. Right now, we're still in inverse, and gradually, these are the these are the easy ones. They get a little harder. We go from inverse. The same term coefficients, the evenly divisible coefficients, to LCM coefficients. And you will see that these are the easy ones. But remember, this is the first time you're seeing this. So the first time you see anything, it's kind of like, okay, I'm kind of trying to bring this all in, dude, but it's a lot. That's why we practice. All right, next one here. I have x minus 2y equals 9, x plus 2y equals 29. Um, let's go to Camila. Do I have inverse coefficients? Yeah. Where? At what? The x's or the y's? The y's. The y's. So negative 2y, positive 2y, that means that instantly I know I can do what with these two? I eliminate them. Those will cancel. You draw your line and you combine the terms you have left. The reason I wrote this problem this way is because you have to be very careful. If you don't write in your invisible ones, you're probably going to make a mistake here. When you combine these, you should not end up with 1x or x squared. What should you end up with? 2x. Because that's a 1x. 
that's a 1x. 1 plus 1 makes 2. So 2x equals a 9 and a 29. If you combine those, you get 38. Now that you know what that is, you go in and you solve for x. You divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals what, class? 19. 19. So I have the first half of my answer. This time I solved x, and I got x first. Last time it was y. Now that I know what x is, I'm going to pick one of these equations and go back and substitute it in. Which one looks easier, the top or the bottom? The bottom looks easier because there's no negatives. So what I do is I'm going to go and I'm going to write it. Now here's the thing. I don't need to write 1 times 19. If I, there's just an x there and I substitute in, only thing I'm going to write is 19. You could do 1 times 19, but everyone here knows that 1 times 19 is 19. So I'm just going to write the 19. I'll replace the x with 19, and I'll do 19 plus 2y is equal to 29. This is a two-step equation. Everybody should know how to solve this by now. We are going to get this constant to the other side, so the variable terms alone. So I subtract 19 from both sides. I end up with 2y equals 10. Class, what do I have to do now? Divide, it from both. Divide both sides by 2, and I get the other half of my answer. y equals 5. And that is my answer, 19 comma 5. There's technically four different types. I only do two the first day because it's a lot. Any questions on this one? Because you're going to solve one of these on your own in a second. Your work should look just like this if you keep it nice and organized. Any questions before I move on? Ask me now. That's why I'm here. If not, you'd just be playing video for all day. Or I'd be Googling your answers. No? Okay. Those were inverse coefficients. And like I said, there's four different types of these that you're going to see for elimination. Type 1, we just did, inverse coefficients. We're going to do type 2 right now. Type 3 and 4 we'll do next time because they take a little work. Now for type 2, they have same term coefficients. So instead of having like a 4x and a negative 4x, you end up with something like 9x and 9x. Well, that's a problem. Can you eliminate these? Yeah. No, you can't right now because if I were to combine those, I'd get 18. I need to eliminate them. So the question is, what can I do to eliminate one of these variable terms? Well, let me ask you a question. How many of you can multiply something by negative 1? Are we all able to do that? Yes. Yes. So what you can do in order to get rid of one of these variable terms is you can do something called creating the inverse. And the way you create the inverse for the rest of these is by multiplication. And I'll let you guys write that. If you realize you have the exact same term, known as same term coefficients, like we do here, your job is to pick one of the equations, either the top one or the bottom one. And you're going to multiply that whole thing by negative 1. And what that will do is it will create an inverse for you. So this is our system. We realized that we had same term coefficients. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom one, and I'm going to multiply everything in the bottom by negative 1. Can you do that? Yeah, as long as what I do to one side, I do the other. I'm not changing anything. So if I multiply everything by negative 1, guess what I just created? I now have a 9x, and I have a negative, negative 9x. Do I have inverse coefficients now, yes or no? Yeah. Yes, I do. And once I have inverse coefficients, I can cancel them out. Most common mistake is that students only multiply one term by negative 1. They forget that you have to multiply every single term. Remember, when you distribute, you're distributing to everything. There's never going to be parentheses here. So you will distribute this to every single term. If you don't do that, it's all wrong. So you have to be very careful. We're going to do a couple of these right now. Both of these have same term coefficients. Other than that, once you create the inverse, everything is the same as what we just did. So if I look here, class, where are the same term coefficients? X or Y? X. X. Six and six. They have the same term. So I'm going to pick one of these, and I am going to multiply it by negative one. I'm probably going to pick the bottom one just because, I don't know, it's easier for me. So I'm going to take this, wrap it in parentheses, and multiply it by negative one. Am I doing anything to the top equation right now, yes or no? No. So we're just going to rewrite that one right here. 6x plus 3y equals 18. 
And then you have to go in and carefully multiply everything in the bottom equation. What is negative 1 times 6x? Negative 6x. What is negative 1 times negative 8? Negative positive 8y. Positive 8y. Equals, what is negative 1 times 62? Negative 62. Do I have inverse coefficients now? Yes. yes. And at this point, everyone in this room has already solved something just like this. Your first step would be to do what with the x's? Cancel them. Eliminate them, because now they're inverse. They eliminate, and then you combine and solve. A 3y and an 8y become 11y. Equals 18 minus 62 is negative 44. Everyone in this room should know how to solve this. You have to divide both sides by the coefficient, which is 11. So we divide both sides by 11, and I get y equals negative 4. Once you know what the y is, go back and find your x. Which equation looks easier? Top one. So we're going to substitute this into the top equation. And I will have 6x plus 3 times negative 4 equals 18. I perform my multiplication. I get 6x minus 12 equals 18. To get the 6x alone, I add 12 to both sides. I get 6x equals 30. To finish this up, I divide both sides by 6, and I have my answer. X is going to equal what, guys? 5. 6. 5. 30 divided by 6 is 5. So everything after the first step is something that you've already done. Once you create the inverse, it's all the same stuff. All right, so we got one left to go. I do not have inverse coefficients here, so I can create them. I'm going to multiply one of these equations by negative one. negative one. Top or bottom? I usually just multiply the bottom. It makes my life easier. So I'll multiply the bottom equation. Ah! <laughs> I don't know where that red came from by negative 1. Am I doing anything to the top equation, yes or no? No. No, so that stays the same. And you're going to have 3x plus y equals 1. On the bottom, I multiply everything. And I will end up with 12x minus y is equal to negative 1. I can now cancel out my y terms which is what I was trying to do the whole time, and I combine everything else. 3x and 12x makes 15x. Guess what else cancels? The constants. 1 minus 1 is? Zero. Zero. I divide both sides by 15, and I get the first half of my answer. x is equal to 0. Now that I know what x is, I go back and I substitute it in to find y. Which one looks easier? The top one. So I do 3 times 0 plus y equals 1. What's 3 times 0? Zero? Zero. 0. And you already have your answer. y equals 1. And that is my answer.